Good morning, class. Day 10. Today, we will be moving to the next topic, which is the Earth's natural processes. Okay, We had just have the introduction last meeting, the last time, lesson one, which is, what is your lesson one? Plate tectonics. Okay, that's our introductory lesson. So we need to focus on the different, okay, natural processes happening on Earth. Okay, volcanoes. Earth's lithosphere is broken. Lithosphere means crust. Okay, is broken into several tectonic plates. You, you already have your plate tectonic theory. Segments of Earth's crust that are extremely slow motion. Okay, you barely actually observe them moving. But then again, if there are some sudden slip, slippage, then in this you can actually observe them. Most volcanoes can be found in areas where tectonic plates are located. Other volcanoes can be found in clusters of small areas. Some geologists estimate the number of active and extinct volcanoes to be a hundred thousand all in all. That's their estimation. Remember that these volcanoes are located in areas where tectonic plates also are located. Okay, where there are some what breaks of rocks. Okay, let's take a look at the importance of these volcanoes. And the reason why, okay, the reason why there are some movements of the tectonic plates. Please take down notes. Most active volcanoes are located in two volcanic belts. We have Alpine Himalayan belt, okay, two volcanic belts. We have the Alpine Himalayan belt and the Circum Pacific belt. This is the Pacific Belt Ring of Fire. Okay, again, the Alpine Himalayan Belt and the Circum Pacific Belt, which are also known as your Pacific Belt Ring of Fire. Okay, the Ring of Fire, which outlines major trenches in the Pacific Ocean, is an active volcanic and earthquake area because movements are actually observed there. The Alpine Himalayan belt reveals the collision of African and Indo-Australian plate, the state road, okay, with the southern margin of Eurasian plate. This belt extends from the Mediterranean area eastward to Turkey and the Middle East. This is the north of India and into the Indonesian island. Please take down. Chris and Matt, can you still hear me? Yes, you should. Okay. Please take down notes also. It contains the volcanoes of Sicily from Italy, the Iranian Sea, Asia Minor, okay, and the Indian Ocean, Southeast Asia, and Indonesia. Okay. The Ring of Fire has many of the world's active volcanoes, okay, including the those in New Zealand, New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, Philippines, okay, Japan, and Kamchatka, in peninsula of Russia, Alaska, and western region of the United States, near Central America, and the western region of South America, and the numerous volcanic Pacific islands scattered between these bodies of land. See? Those are those areas are really active. Okay, talking about um the activity or, or this volcanic activity. Okay, why do you think we? Why do you think Earth needs to have this volcanic activity? What is the purpose of having volcanic activity? Okay. 
for the tectonic plates to move. Yes, we have an idea, Dom. What else? Yes, Rabbi. Pressure from the east. Yes, to release pressure. This is to release pressure. Remember that your asthenosphere is moving, correct? Okay. Your asthenosphere is moving for what? What is the purpose why your asthenosphere is moving? To protect us for protection. What else? To form landforms. To form landforms, yes. Do you have an idea, Dom? What else? Why do we need why why does this? Um Volcanic, no, no, this asthenosphere is still moving until now. The purpose is to create landforms, yes. What else? It is a product of collision, correct? Okay, how does Earth form? This is because of the Big Bang Theory. Remember the Big Bang Theory? The collision of what? You don't have idea. You don't have an idea about the Big Bang Theory, correct? What is what happened to the Big Bang Theory? Yeah, those are actually the birth of stars. There is an explosion that happened. The explosion there tends to power up the formation of Earth. And because there is a movement there, and based on Newton's law of motion, the first law of motion, which is... What is the first law of motion by Newton? Again, your lessons are interconnected. The first law of motion by Newton states that an object at rest remains at rest. An object in motion remains in motion unless acted by the unbalanced force or external force. Therefore, because of this condition, Earth continues to move and the asteroid continues to move unless there is a balanced force. There is an external force that acts on it to stop. Okay. Remember that Earth also belongs to Goldilocks zone. When you say Goldilocks zone, this is an area or this is a place where life proliferates or enables life to proliferate. Okay? Let's continue. The locations of volcanoes are associated with tectonic activity, hence your tectonic plates. Okay? Mount um, St. Helens in Washington, D.C., and Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, a few known dangerous volcanoes, okay, are located on plates that are grinding together. Okay? Other volcanic islands seem to rise in the middle of tectonic plates. These volcanoes can be found in the Iceland and Hawaiian Islands. Yeah, in Hawaii. Okay. This is your Pacific Belt Ring of Fire, as you can see. Okay. Active volcanoes are usually associated with earthquake activity, presence of hot water springs, okay, and changes in the elevation of volcanoes crater. An active volcano may erupt at any time, just like your Mount Pinatubo and Mount Mayon in Albay. They are really active. If you're going to check on areas in Albay and in um, Mount Pinatubo, you can actually see a lot of hot springs there. Okay? Meaning to say that the area there has active volcanic activity. Okay? Now, if you're going to examine the water on these hot springs, it contains a lot of Sulfur, which is an indication that again there is an active volcanic activity. Okay. Wow. 
What? No, it's a powder actually. It's a yellowish powder. Yeah. Just like in your soap, the bioderm, it contains sulfur actually. Sulfur is an active ingredient. It can actually kill bacteria and fungus. And it's the main reason why some of them or some of the manufacturers of pharmaceuticals use sulfur to kill bacteria and fungus or fungi. Some volcanoes are considered dormant because they have no known history of eruption but may erupt based on its seismic indications of the activity beneath the volcano. Some volcanoes, volcanoes that have no known record of eruption and tectonic activity for a long period of time is called extinct volcano. If they are not if there is no record okay, for a long period of time, no known record for a long, longer period of time, then they say yes, that volcano is considered extinct. Okay. Please take down the important terminologies there. This is how we study science. You take down important terminologies. Okay. And define. Do not memorize, familiarize the terminologies. You have two absence today. Chris and um, no, Ryan, uh, yeah. This is present. Magma and volcanism. Okay. Earth's internal heat is essential in sustaining life on Earth as it drives most geological processes including volcanism and plate tectonics, right? The source of this heat is attributed to leftover heat from its formation around 4.5 giga anum. Okay? As gravitational energy caused particles to accrete and collide with one another, forming larger bodies. Again, 4.5, 4.54 or 4.5 Giga anum. That's the formation of Earth. It is still the leftover of the formation. Okay. It includes the collision of Earth with Theia, which led to the formation of Moon and differentiated Earth. See? Your lessons are interconnected. Okay. Another source of Earth's internal heat is the Disintegration of natural radioactive elements inside Earth. Disintegration. Okay? Or, other term for disintegration is? What are the other terms for disintegration? To disintegrate meaning? To? Yes, Hillary. What is to disintegrate? Other term for disintegration? To? That? What is that Larry? Huh? Disintegration. Disintegrate is to? What is that? Sure. What is the other term for disintegration? Life your biodegradable, it will eventually disintegrate. Decompose. Correct, Janine. The decomposition of radioactive elements. Remember the radioactive decomposition? I'm going. You didn't discuss it yet? No. We still didn't discuss radioactivity. 
in our previous years. We did not discuss radioactivity. Huh? Under. Huh? We didn't discuss radioactivity. Huh? Under. Huh? Under EM waves, electromagnetic waves. Are you sure? Oh, yeah, I hear Huh? We didn't discuss EM waves because radioactivity is in EM waves. <coughs> Electromagnetic waves, not a star name. <laughs> huh? Are you sure? Oh, that is why. Okay. You tend to forget all your lessons after the reading. And that's the reason behind. So the simplification is the composition. So radioactive decomposition. It is actually happening, and this is one of the internal source of heat. What are these elements inside Earth? We have radioactive decay uranium, thallium, potassium. Based on geophysical data and geochemical models, scientists estimate the temperatures in Earth's core are between 5,000 degrees centigrade and 7,000 degrees centigrade or Celsius. Okay. Uranium, uranium, thallium, and potassium. Yeah. But again, you look at the, what is this? Okay. Review. What is the, okay. what is this again? Number? What is this number? Huh? Number of electrons and atoms? Close. You're actually close? Familiar? Huh? Familiar? <laughs> this is the atomic number. Number? <laughs> huh? Atomic weight? Atomic weight or atomic mass. Okay. So if we have different atomic weights, atomic mass, it is the element there is considered an isotopes. These are isotopes of uranium. These are isotopes of thallium, and this is this is an isotope of potassium. That's why they are radioactive because they are unstable isotopes. Oh my God. These are unstable isotopes. And this, these are highly radioactive. And eventually they will have radioactive decay or decomposition. Are we okay? Oh my God, great then. You will join the Please ball outside school. You need to be familiar with this. Eventually. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just think about it. We need a bus. Again, based on your graphical data and your chemical models, and it estimates the temperatures of Earth is between 5,000 degrees centigrade to 7,000 and 7,000 degrees. Let's continue. Okay, then magma. The rocks commonly found on the surface of Earth are in solid state. Okay, but however, rocks also exist in liquid state at certain locations in, inside Earth. The molten rocks are found that are found beneath Earth's surface are called magma. Hence, your magma chamber or the, the area we're in, magma is contained. Okay. They are less dense than the surrounding solid rocks and therefore capable of rising to the surface. When magma emerges from the surface of the earth, it is called now lava, hence lava flow. Okay? Some, some volcanoes has lava flows. So we need to say it will just eventually, or the lava just flow outside the volcano's crater. That's the daily lava flow. Okay, let's continue. Do you have any questions so far? Question, question. What is the time now? Yeah. 
Yes, there is Rabbi. There is. Must listen. Um, these lessons are actually discussed. Yeah, let me try. Start career can buy around third year in high school. So it's grade nine. Still. Third year high school. Okay. I learned this one much when I was still in third year high school. And the terminologies there are still the same until now. Magma is usually composed of abundant elements including silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay? The compositional variations of magma expressed in terms of oxides like silicon oxide, aluminum oxides, please take down, calcium oxides, magnesium oxide, and iron oxide with H2O water. Again, we have silicon oxide, aluminum oxide, calcium oxide, magnesium oxide, iron oxide, or ferric oxide, um, iron oxide, and we have hydrogen with, water, hydrogen with oxygen, which is pure water. The most common component is the silica, okay, or silicon oxide, which is 45% to 75% by its weight. Silica. Silica. No, no. Silica is actually used for soap. Silica. Your silica gel is a soap? Silica is actually used for? Yes, it absorbs moisture. That's silica. That's silica gel. Okay, it absorbs moisture. Silica also are actually used in crystals, building up crystals, glass. Because again, this is abundant in your magma or your, your lava. The tendency is it can also be used as for crystallization. Okay, do you have any questions so far? Hmm? It will not react to your body, but then again, it will also hinder some of the passages in your body. Remember, silica is hard. Okay, you, you need a lot of heat and pressure to melt silica. Dissolved gases, primarily water vapor and carbon dioxide, are also present, comprising from 0.2 to 3% by weight. Another property of magma is that it has a very high temperature. Okay. The melting temperature of rocks could range from 800 degrees centigrade to 1400 degrees centigrade or Celsius. Okay. Magma also has the ability to flow since it is a liquid. Okay. The degree of resistance to flow is called viscosity. It is actually viscose. Okay. In vernacular lapot. Lapot. Viscosity. Laput. Sticky. Viscous. The more viscous the substance is, the less fluid it becomes. Viscosity of magma generally depends on the silica content. Okay, remember that silica is for crystallization. Okay? Magmas with high silica are more viscous than low silica magmas. Gas content and temperature also affect the viscosity of magma. 
Okay, generally, gas content is higher when the temperature is higher and this makes the magma less viscous. For instance, lava just came out from a volcano which has a very high temperature and flows readily. But as temperature decreases, okay, it more become or it becomes more viscous and eventually stop flowing. So if there is a low temperature in regards to the magma or the lava, it will become viscous and has less movement. But if it is more, it has more heat there or the temperature is higher, then in CS it can actually flow easily. Formation of magma. Sir, why are we focusing on the formation of magma and the lava flows? Because again, when we study Earth, we need also to study what's inside Earth. Okay, in order to know a, a to, to know a certain place, we need first to know the people. Correct? Yeah. Magmas are found formed under certain circumstances in special locations, deep in, in crust and the upper mantle. Because again, this is actually in the asthenosphere. So one of my students asks, previous student asks, Sir, where is the mag where is the, the asthenosphere located? The asthenosphere is actually located in the lower mantle. Okay? Because the upper mantle is still crust. Okay? The upper mantle is still crust. But this is the brittle part of the crust. Please take it down. Okay? Under circumstances, location live in the crust or in the upper mantle. The upper mantle is still crust. This is the brittle part of the crust. Where is the asthenosphere there? Okay? The asthenosphere is in the lower mantle. That's the asthenosphere. Okay? Some of the questions, like for example, if you go to some quiz balls, some of the questions there ask about where does your asthenosphere belong? Would that be in the crust? Upper crust, okay, upper mantle, lower mantle, or those are the questions. So again, the answer there is it is located in the lower mantle, middle and lower mantle, okay. Then in CS, they will create more distractions um, with, with pertaining to their questions. They, they will create more distractions. In you. Okay. They are formed where conditions are right to cause pre existing solid rocks to melt. The common notion that the crust floats over a sea of molten rock is wrong because, again, mantle is mostly solid. Mantle is mostly solid. We are not floating. Okay? There is some area on the mantle, which is a stenosphere, that is actually fluid. Which is composed of molten rocks. Okay? Before, when I was still in high school, the notion there is we are floating. Okay? Uh, in a magma. Okay? Because plates are floating in magma. That's the notion before, but because of the updates in the field of science and technology, they found out that we are not floating. Simply because, remember the upper mantle, it is still solid, okay, but the brittle part. Okay, the lower mantle is very astonishing below. Magma can be generated in several ways. Melting can occur when the temperature stays the same, but the pressure decreases. This process is called decompression melting. Please take note. Decompression melting. This is a condition wherein the temperature stays the same, but the pressure decreases. If there is a decrease in pressure, it will actually perform decompression melting. Okay. This usually occurs in part of the crust called rift valleys, mid ocean ridges, and in volcanic hot spots.
questions so far with them questions questions okay this is the illustration okay this is the compression melting because the pressure there there the press decreases while the temperature stays constant okay it has a constant temperature but the pressure decreases so it actually performs the compression melting this is the convection currents okay this this actually came out in your previous exam, the convection current. This is now the movement of your asthenosphere. This is a convection current. Okay? The movement alone of the asthenosphere is the convection current. Asthenosphere. Remember that your mantle again is actually has solid components. The lower mantle, which is this, okay, is your asthenosphere. You do not be confused with the terminologies. Okay? Do you have any questions so far? What is this convergence? Yes. There is a convergence there, correct? Huh? What is this convergence? Organic continental convergence. Okay. Another Milton trigger is when volatiles or gaseous substances are added into the hot solid rocks in a process called flux melting. So this is flux melting. Okay. I included flux melting here. This one. Okay, we added okay, we added um gaseous substances. So if there are some addition of gaseous substances, it will actually perform flux melting. And then in CS it will trigger in volcanic activity or volcanic eruption. Okay. If there's there's some um times that there are some gaseous substances that may add to may may, may be added on certain volcano, it may actually trigger volcanic activity or volcanic eruption. That's flux melting. Okay. The water vapor carbon dioxide will react with the rocks and weaken or break their bonds and cause them to change from solid to liquid state. It usually occurs in the subduction zone. Remember your subduction zone? Okay. In the subduction zone, you usually happens, in, flux melting happens usually in the subduction zone because, again, water vapor from carbon dioxide will eventually, what? Eventually? change into liquid state and will react on rocks and will trigger gaseous substances that can trigger also volcanic eruption. Magma can also be formed by a process called heat transfer melting. Okay, It is the melting of the surrounding rocks caused by very hot magma that brings additional heat. An extremely hot magma is about 1200 degrees Celsius from the upper mantle could rise and cause melting of rocks in the lower crusts, lower crusts, so meaning to say upper mantle and lower crust still connected. They, they are still solid there. Yeah. Okay. In the lower crust, which is 500 degrees centigrade, which has a lower temperature. This occurs in rift valleys, mid ocean ridges, hot spots, and the subduction zones. Daniel, are you okay? Huh? Are we good? It's already time. We still have 10 minutes more, correct? Yeah. Well, let's finish this first. 
Rocks are composed of several different minerals which cause it to melt over a range of temperature. Okay, the melting temperature of rock is called eutectic. Okay. Temperature U means true. Okay. U means true. Tec tec is tectonic or rocks. Eutectic temperature is lower than the melting temperature of its constituent minerals. Okay, please take down notes. This will come out in your exam, I'm sure. Come again, Charles? Huh? I don't understand your language. Do not. Do not next. Do not next. Please take down, take down important details there. Okay. Okay. Are we? When rocks begin to melt, only certain minerals are melted. Okay. The process is called partial melting. And the term partial melting. This is when rocks begin to melt, but some of the minerals, only certain minerals are melted. Other minerals or, or some of these minerals are actually not melted. That's partial melting. So you can observe this, the rock will eventually be melted completely when the temperature is high enough. The magma form by partial melting has a different composition than the original solid rock. So you can observe this when you have a rock and you, you can actually see some crystals there. That's partial melting. Why? Because it is not entirely melted. Okay? Some of the minerals there are not melted.